publishing firm owned by Dan and Barbara Glenn, where each new novel is acted out by the Mystery House staff before it is accepted for publication. Mystery House. Come in, Art. Come in. Thank you. We're already just got a nice try out of a Mystery House novel. Well, fine. Hey, who's the youngster? Tommy. He's a proof boy at Mystery House. We needed a youngster in tonight's cast, so here he is. A youngster in a mystery story? Well, of course. And he's mighty important to the plot of the show. He certainly is, Art. Matter of fact, there's just one thing I can think of offhand that's more important. Yeah, what's that? <laughs> you certainly asked for this one, Art. Listen. <laughs> but the proof. This is the story of Johnny Loomis. Johnny Loomis, who said, I've decided to commit a murder. And I know that I won't be bothered about any pangs of remorse after I kill Jess Stalin, because he has to die. Dorothy isn't mature enough to recognize true values. And she's fascinated by the romantic voice, the dramatic poses, and the theatrical background that Jess Stalin affects. She's going to marry him. And she'd be dreadfully unhappy married to an actor. Besides, I love her. I must kill him. But I must make my plans carefully, logically, calmly. I must have an alibi that can't be broken. Johnny, I'm surprised my buzzing around, but I have to get into this infernal guardsman costume for the third day. That's quite all right, Jess. I just stopped backstage to congratulate you on a magnificent performance. Well, thanks, but you've seen the show a half dozen times before, Johnny. Why all this? I wasn't referring to your part in the play, Jess. I was talking about the superb job of acting you've done with Dorothy. Oh. Acting? Yes. She's an impressionable youngster. You've been able to act the romantic hero for her. She's not marrying you, you know. She's not in love with you. Hey, look, this is no time to get me all riled up, Johnny, right before the big act of the show. Yes, I know. Acting is the one important thing in the world to you, isn't it, Jess? I'd say that the part you've created for Dorothy's benefit is your most successful role. Oh, I knew that you felt that about Dorothy and me, Johnny, but I didn't think you'd be such a bum sport about it. What's so wonderful about sportsmanship? I don't play for sport, Jess. I play to win. Oh, I like your nerve. Coming in here while the show's on, trying to stir up a row. The show, the show. That's the important thing, isn't it? Also, a lot of people clear out of here, will you? Yes. Yeah. I'm leaving. And this is the last time you'll see me alive, Jess. What? Now, oh, don't talk like that. It's your fault, Jess. I'm going to commit suicide. You wouldn't kill yourself. You couldn't. No. Just wait and see. That guy's completely dead. Oh, well, I better try to get organized for the third act. Mm, he's crazy. Really crazy. Maybe I ought to tell somebody. <laughs> I thought it was your imagination, Jess, but I'm worried about Johnny Loomis. You mean he's been scaring you with that suicide talk of his? Yes. Yes. Do you think he'd actually go as far as that? I don't know, Dorothy. He's a queer duck. Moody. I never quite understood him. What makes me feel terrible is acting this way. Somehow it spoils all the happiness of our wedding plans. Don't let it, Dorothy. Well, I suppose I ought to be heading to the theater matinee today. I have a notion to go with you. I'd love to have you, darling, but <laughs> there's not much for you to do while the show's on. I could watch the show. <laughs> I think you already know the lines better than I do. Maybe, but every time I see it, it's the thrill to know that every other woman in the audience is crazy about you and, and don't mind. <laughs> I'm afraid that you're an incurable romanticist. <laughs> it's fun being one. I hope you'll never change, darling. All my life I've felt that way about things. Maybe that's why I knew the first time I talked to you that this was it. You know, I really owe Johnny Loomis something for bringing us together. 
there's the phone. Hello? What? Oh, yes, Johnny. No. You're speaking of the devil. You what? Johnny, please, listen to me. Don't do anything foolish. Please. What? Is he threatening suicide again? Listen, now let me take that phone. I'm going to tell him off. Yes, please. No, Johnny, you're being very silly about all this, and you're making me very unhappy. Why don't you come over and talk to me? No, you mustn't, Dorothy. I'd like to explain things to you, Johnny. Maybe that would make everything better all the way around. You come? Fine. I'll be waiting for you. Goodbye. Dorothy, you shouldn't have invited him over here. He, he might be dangerous in his present mood. Johnny and I are going to have an understanding. In trying to be kind to him, I've hurt him more than I would have by making a clean break. Well, take a lot of curtain calls this afternoon, darling. I'm coming back here just as soon as the matinee is over. I'll be worried about you and Dorothy again. And you tell him for me that if there's any more of this foolishness, so help me, I'm going to call the police. I counted on my suicide threat, flattering Jeff Allen Vigo. I knew he'd talk to his friends about it. But I had to be sure that the suicide idea was firmly planted. So I had to talk to Dorothy. I'm not an actor. It was most abhorrent for me to mouth words about taking my own life. But necessary. It was easy enough to see that she was frightened. Johnny, you're talking like a madman. Try to be sensible about this, please. Yes? Well, since when has sense and love gone together? But I've explained to you that I don't love you. I never have loved you. Love has to be a mutual thing to be successful. But you don't know whether you love me or not, Dorothy. You're infatuated by an actor playing a glamorous role. That's not true. You married Jeff Fallon and all your life you'll regret it. What's more, all your life you'll know that you killed me. No. No, you mustn't talk like that. I can't stand the thought of you marrying anyone else, Dorothy. I, I'd have to kill myself. Can't you see? There's nothing else for me to do. You talk about Jeff being an actor. You're the actor. You're trying to scare me with your suicide threats. You've got the slightest intention of going through with them. You're doing the acting. That's most unkind, Dorothy. And so wrong. Goodbye. No. No, come back here. Johnny. Come back. Johnny. <laughs> I knew that Jess Fallon's matinee would be over at 4.40 o'clock. That he'd reach his little apartment near the theater at 10 minutes before 5. So at 4 o'clock, I sat down at my desk and wrote a rather maudlin suicide note. One that would make people feel sorry for me. Then I went down to the basement and asked the janitor for change for a dollar bill. Explaining that I wanted to put a quarter in my gas meter. I went back up to my apartment and telephoned Dorothy Carlyle. Hello, uh, Dorothy. Dorothy, I, I thought things all over. Darling, you were saying that I was bluffing about suicide was just the impetus I needed. You, you were wrong, dear. I'd be much better off dead. Uh, what? Why? I'm at my apartment, of course. Wait. What for? Huh. Uh, I'm afraid nothing you could say would make any difference now, dear. Well, well, I'll wait. I've quite made up my mind. It was just 4.40 when I finished the phone call. Just time for Jess Fallon's matinee to end. And only time for me to get to his rooms before him if I hurried. I turned on all the gas jets in the kitchen stove. And I locked both doors to my apartment with the spring locks. And went down a back street. My hat pulled low over my eyes. And a butler up around my chin. I went to Jess Fallon's room and waited. Oh, Johnny, how'd you get in here? What do you want, anyway? One question at a time, Jess. I've got a good mind to report you to the police. You've caused altogether too much trouble, you and your I friends. won't cause much more trouble, Jess. Your troubles are just about over. What? Don't you know why I'm here? Are you insane? I'm here to kill you, Jess. You fool, put that gun down. You can't get away with such a thing. You haven't any idea how well I can get away with it, Jess? Put down that gun. Why, you fool. You're the fool, Jess. You're a fool to think you could take Darcy away from me. I'll never let you or anybody else take her away from me. No, get away from me! No. Now, home, down the back stairs, so that nobody sees me. I looked around carefully and breathed deeply at the fresh, crisp air. No, I wasn't shaking. 
shaking at all. No remorse, no excitement. Yes, everything was working out according to plan. Until one of those little trivial things that can't be foreseen. A stupid little accident that could ruin everything. Johnny Lewis' apartment. Dorothy Carlyle has just been joined by Detective Dennis Delahanty, who is trying to force the door. I'm afraid it's too late, Lieutenant. I ran down to the janitor's apartment and called you as soon as I got here. Johnny promised to wait. I called him back and he didn't answer. I hurried, Lieutenant. I, I got here as fast as I could. But... Oh, this is no gas. We're too late, I know. I guess we'd better break the door in, all right. There's plenty of gas. Keep it out from under it. Stand away from the door, please, Miss Carlyle. Maybe it is a mistake at that. 
Johnny Bill was killed, yes, Lieutenant. I know it. I'm sure of it. Being sure of a murder doesn't help much, Miss Carlyle. What you think and what you feel may be right, but the law won't listen to you. It takes nothing but proof. Solid, hard facts. Johnny Loomis is insane. He was jealous of death and he killed him. I stake my life on it. You've given Mr. Loomis a pretty good alibi, Miss Carlyle. I, I wouldn't give him. You said he called you at 20 minutes to five. Yes. And you got to Loomis's place at five minutes to five. You're sure of that, are you? I, yes, positive. Loomis had already started his suicide attempt when you got here. The gas was turned on and the doors were locked. But what of it? He killed Jess. No, nope. you've just proved that he didn't. Jess Fallon left the theater at 4.40, the same time Loomis was calling you. Walking real fast, you can make it from the theater to his rooms in 10 minutes. That puts him at home no earlier than 4.50, don't you see? Johnny Loomis killed him. It's a good 10 minutes from Fallon's rooms to Johnny Loomis's apartment. Now, that would mean Loomis couldn't possibly have killed Fallon and gotten back to his place before 5 o'clock. Oh, you see, it won't work. You can't make it work. Oh, excuse me, officer. Somebody's at the door. Wait. Hello, Ronnie. I'm sorry, but I'm rather busy right now, dear. You run along and play. Mother said it might be pretty important, Miss Dorothy. She said I should come right over and talk to you. Right away. It's important? Yes. It's about Mr. Loomis and the murder. But, Mr. Loomis. Yes, sir. I've been playing in the schoolyard with the rest of the kids, and I was late getting home. Five minutes to five when I saw Mr. Loomis. Was that? So, uh... Five minutes to five, did you say? Yes, sir. Just where did you see Mr. Loomis, Sonny? Why, over on Finger Street, the block where the murder was. I asked him for a ride in his car, and he didn't want to talk to me, and acted awful funny. Yeah, I'll bet. He was pretty cute. But he couldn't have been there and In the kitchen on the floor? He wasn't. He must have turned on the gas right after he called you. And he locked the doors and tore over to Fallon's and killed him. Meanwhile, you got to Loomis's and tried the front door and smelled the escaping gas. Of course. And you called me. Johnny Loomis got back to his place about five minutes after five. Went up the back stairs and into the kitchen. He took a few whiffs of gas and lay down on the floor, knowing that he'd get enough air there to keep him alive, even if he passed out. I got there ten minutes later and broke down the door. That's the way he did it. The only way he could... And with Ronnie seeing him near Jeff Fallon. That's the proof I needed, Miss Carlyle. Now we've got Johnny Loomis right where we want him. But, Ronnie, I just can't understand why you'd make up such a fantastic story. I didn't make it up. It's a truth, and you know it. There's no use trying to lie out of it, Johnny. You're caught. Dorothy, I'm surprised you'd believe an impressionable youngster who's probably been reading all kinds of lurid tales. Why, you talk to me, Mr. Loomis. You even said there was something about my knowing what time it was. Son, you don't know what you're saying. Now, I know you wouldn't want to hurt me. So, why don't you admit to these people that you made all of this up just to have some excitement, hmm? I didn't. Bonnie, you're sure you haven't thought about this until you actually believe it was so? I guess I know. You do, too. You acted awful funny about seeing me. You remember how he was dressed, Sonny? Sure. He had on a fuzzy gray hat pulled low over his face. Joe Gray Fedora. In a chicken scarf. Red and gray pulled up over his face. Oh, Lieutenant. I gave him a scarf exactly like that. Yes. Which Ronnie has had the opportunity to see plenty of times when I called here along with the hat. It's rather ridiculous. I guess I know what I saw, all right. His description stands up, Loomis. And you are shaking his story a bit. No, no, it looks like you're trapped, Loomis. Sonny... You're quite sure you saw me? Yes. And I didn't give you a ride when you asked me? No. You said you didn't have your car. So what did you do? Why, I started walking on toward home and you walked the other way. Of course. And then uh, did anything else happen, Ronnie? Uh, yes. Yes? Uh, something else exciting? Yes. I didn't tell anybody about it because I scared. And I didn't think they'd believe me anyway. Oh, and you didn't think they'd believe you anyway, hmm? Well, what was this other exciting thing that happened, Ronnie? Well, I walked on a little ways into the next block, wondering why he'd acted so funny. And I heard footsteps behind me and... Footsteps? Yes. And I looked around, and it was a devil! A what? A devil! All red with the meanest looking face you ever saw in your life. And horns sprouting out of his head, and a long tail with a sharp hook on the end. And he grabbed me and started making funny noises. Yes, yes, I'm quite sure he made funny noises, Ronnie. Uh, he grabbed you, you say? Yes, and he was dancing up and down, and I jerked away from him. I started running, and I got away from 
coming. I ran most the rest of the way home. And when I looked around, he wasn't chasing me anymore. And he was a red devil, you say? A bright red? You bet. Awful bright. With huge horns. Okay, okay. You don't need to ask him anymore, little miss. You win. Run along home, kid. And don't read any more of those ghost stories. They might get you into trouble someday. But it's true. I saw it. Sure, sure. We believe you. But uh, run along now. And stay away from any more red devils. Dorothy, you've no idea how deeply you wounded me believing that I'd kill the man you thought you loved. You did kill him. You mustn't be so bitter and suspecting, dear. Don't you dare call me dear. Get out of here. Never want to see you again. You're wrong, dear Dorothy. You love me. You've always loved me. And as soon as you get over this shock... I'll never get over it. And I wish you'd get out of my sight. I hate you. Oh, I wonder who that could be. Hi. Lieutenant Delahunty? Yes, ma'am. I'm glad Mr. Loomis is here. Hello, Delahunty. I've got a warrant for your arrest, Loomis. My arrest? What? I thought we'd gone over all that. Yeah. The little boy's story wouldn't stand up. But I got to thinking. So I got the chief to give me a half a dozen cops, and we scoured the neighborhood of just Fallon's apartment. Look what we found. A package? What is it? Something that was pretty well hidden when I unwrap it. Oh, it's a red devil costume. Yeah. And we checked with the theater. Jeff Fallon had a costume like that. Some of the actors had seen it. And it was missing from his trunk. It's from the same customer as the rest of his costume. Well, then... Little Ronnie Morgan's story stands up all the way. Even the part about the red devil. You're under arrest, woman. I don't believe so, Della Hardy. Johnny, Johnny, put it on the I'll have to kill both of you, I guess. And it might not be a bad idea to kill that little brat next door if I can find him before I skip out. I wouldn't try shooting, Loomis. No? Well, I would. Here, Loomis, catch me. <laughs> devil suit. In my face. You'd never have shot me if it hadn't been... hadn't have been... for that. Too bad we can't bury him in that costume. It sort of fits his character. 